tracking your financial statements until you pull it in from that feeds transaction. And so you probably want to double check it on a manual system and then pull it over. So this one says check each payout uh, in for review, then confirm, and this will automatically confirm. Connect after, you, so this would be the disconnect if you wanted to disconnect here. If we go into the items, they have the sales items, which is gonna be pointing to uh, the default in QuickBooks sales Shopify item, shipping, Shopify uh, shipping item, and then discount Shopify discount. You can edit these items here and then change change them here and so i'll cancel that these are going to be the defaults and then you've got the customers and vendors now note we're not pulling in all the customers all the customer data is going to be over here in your shopify store and that's probably where you want it because you're usually going to be a bulk seller you're trying to sell a bunch of stuff on like a shopify or an amazon you don't really need to know all the information about the customers other than put their email on your email list most of the time right so they're not so they need to have a customer so they're just going to put it into a generic customer meaning this is going to be one customer for all transactions that are going through your shopify store if you need to have more detail about a particular transaction then you're not going to go to it in quickbooks because we didn't pull in all that data but rather you're going to go to the shopify right and then on the advanced these are the mapping accounts so these are kind of like the defaults that it sets up basically automatically so you've got a clearing account this holds shopify payouts before they're reconciled with your bank account so just like we did in the manual method we still have to deal with this clearing account which means when the money's coming in it's not going to deposit directly into the checking account it's going to put it into the clearing account and then we can match it to the deposit that's going to clear the checking account which will bring the clearing account back down same concept as we looked at with the manual method it's just trying to automate it now then you've got the sales shopify item sales is, is uh, quickbooks categorization shopify sales income account shipping income these are the charges that you're going to have for the shipping it's going to go to the sh to the shopify shipping income account uh, and then you have the discounts promotions applied to sale shopify discounts it's going to break that one out and then selling fees commissions and fees related to sales it's going to go into the shopify selling fees if you want to adjust these accounts then you can map it differently right i can go into here here's my list of accounts i can add uh, new accounts if i so choose so i'm going to close that but but i'm going to keep the defaults here so if, you, if you've been doing your system prior to this and you already have mapped out accounts then you might want to use those accounts and you can change the mapping here to the accounts that you have set up and then you've got subscription fees what you pay for your shopify subscription shopify subscription fees is is, the, is where it's going to go and then adjustments channel adjustments and miscellaneous shopify other adjustments and then you've got the sales tax based on your region shopify sales tax and then we've got the reserve balance payout balance reserved by channel shopify uh reserve balance so that's the general mapping so if i close this back out and i open up my chart of accounts for example if i go down to my accounting down here and i look at my chart of accounts when i set up the shopify it set up those accounts for me right so here's a clearing account here's the shopify item here and uh it set up some of those uh, those uh, accounts Shopify sales tax could have set that up but it's good those those accounts that are mapped out are now over here in the the chart of accounts I've added a bunch of other accounts as well when we've been doing the practice problems so it's getting a little muddled at this point notice if I go in the sales tab and I look at the customers uh, then we've got our customers here and it's set up the Shopify customer. So it's not gonna add all the customers, of course. Again, it's just made one customer that's gonna be our lump sum customer. Now also remember there's the same kind of issue with this system as we had with the manual system, which is that Shopify is now kind of connecting to QuickBooks so that QuickBooks can pull in the detailed information breaking out the deposit. But if you're dealing with other payment processors like a paypal 
or a Stripe, for example, meaning customers are paying you through PayPal or Stripe, something other than Shopify Pay, not, like not using just their credit card, for example, on Shopify Pay or something, then you might have other uh, items that are gonna be f on the PayPal level that you're gonna have to deal with for fees on that level. So, so this is gonna be a common problem with many different kinds of integrations that we, that we saw. So that's something that you've got to be mindful of uh, as well. So just, you know, so keep in, do you have, so the question would be, do you have PayPal turned on? Can they pay you through PayPal or can they only pay you through the Shopify pay? Uh, if you have the PayPal turned on, you want to make sure that you, you have a system that's going to be dealing with the PayPal component of the payment, similar process or problem that we talked about with the manual system. All right. So then if we were going to approve these, let's go back on up top into the banking and say, let's go ahead and add this one. So this one came through, we, we analyzed it and we didn't auto add it. We said we want to add it manually. So let's go ahead and add it. Boom. The 715 is, is in place. Now I should be able to map that in the future. I'll be able, I would be able to see in the checking account that 715 and I can map, I can match it out, but let's see what happens over here. Let's, let's run this for, for. 010123 to 123123 23 this time on the balance sheet. So note that it's got its clearing account here, but it actually puts the transaction in and out of the clearing account and does put it into the checking account ultimately. So if I go into the checking account, there's our uh, 7.15. Uh, Note, however, if I go back on over here and exit out.